Malcolm Dwarven Home and to this episode in which I concentrate really on two things. How I'm going to construct the carcass of the Art Deco Hotel and including how I'm going to think about lighting it and what I'm going to be used to light the hotel and also how I go about building uh, trees using seafoam. Um, the video is a bit longer than normal uh, because I've left in uh, unedited the whole sequence of me painting the seafoam and then applying the leaves because I want to show you just how little time it takes other than drying time and things like that uh, and how straightforward it is and I've learned all that from other YouTubers so thank you to all those other YouTubers. Uh, there is a running session in which I manage at one point to have five locomotives running at the same time uh, before it all went horribly wrong but you're not going to see that bit. Okay I'll speak to you again at the end but now let's turn back to the work on building the Art Deco Hotel. Well this is the second video on the build of the um, hotel and I've been thinking a bit about uh, how to construct the hotel and deciding finally what it is I'm going to use as the material for building the hotel. But also I'd started thinking hard about how I was going to light the hotel and I've decided um, to take a slightly different path which will make the internal build of the hotel uh, a little bit simpler. The base you saw last time round, which I mentioned I spent a lot of time making sure it was accurately cut. And then I started giving some thought as to how I was going to construct the external walls and the sort of sections that would need to be created to enable me to build things. So essentially the external walls it's, are a number of pieces of card to provide the uh, exterior of the building into which will be cut the holes for things like windows and doors. One thing which I'll do, deal with very quickly is the start of the construction of the revolving door for the centre. Uh, this here, if I bring it into focus, um, is two PD kits. Uh, P, that's P -E -D -I -E from uh, they're based up in Orkney. These are industrial doors uh, of some kind and you get two of them in one kit. Uh, but as soon as I saw them, uh, I thought, well, if I could attach four of those to a piece of uh, tubing, which is plasticard tubing, uh, strip styrene tubing. Not entirely sure what size it is, but I'll put that in the description below. And so the doors were stuck uh, and then painted, primed and painted. These are brass, um, brass etch, the doors. Uh, and then I painted the top black and the bottom bit gold uh, to create my, whoops, my revolving doors. Let me just go back into focus again. And that will sit um, in my spares box. I've been modeling long enough to have a spares box. Uh, I stripped down some uh, old hard disks because I wanted to dispose of the hard disks. And in among them was all sorts of useful stuff, including the spring. But the, uh, what I proposed to do is to cut a piece of the spring off so that it drops down through the uh, revolving door. Uh, there'll be a roof on here the, the L shape there will be stuck down uh, and that, that will be more than enough because this, is, uh, this isn't going to be spinning constantly. It's just so that I know that if I wish to, I can make the door revolve. Uh, and what I will do is build essentially this section, the front section with a box into which will be set the doors. Um, so the revolving door is part way to being completed. But back to these sections here, uh, as you can see, there are going to be two sections at the front. Uh, this one has a very slight um, cut taken out so that, excuse me, it will it fits into the into this gap here. This is the right hand side and fits into that gap there. So that's giving me the front section of the building, uh, and then these as one either side provides the side of the building and these are all uh, coded up so that they go into a specific place because they've been cut to fit exactly. Uh, I need a small piece of card which will sit here to close off that corner and then these pieces are just the various sections for the side walls. They can be done as one piece. The back wall is going to be in three sections because I've got different configurations. There's going to be offices here so there's different wall configurations that's very simple. 
but this is the one that will have the fire escape sat in it. Uh, and that will provide me with the carcass. When I was thinking about how this was all going to go together, I started to think about lighting uh, and wanting to try and have that when I put the lights on, all the lights in all the rooms don't light up at the same time because that just isn't realistic. That isn't how things are done. And there are various ways you can achieve that. Um, obviously by building internal walls and blacking out and you know, only having lights in certain places which to an extent I've done with the fire station uh, but I saw on uh, a while ago various things from uh, Woodland Scenics with their just plug system for lights and light block kit and light diffusing window film so I'll just clear these away and I'll bring the things that are at the back forward and just talk you through what I'm going to be using one thing I forgot to say about um, the card that I'm going to use to make the carcass, I've decided to use card rather than plastic because I like the surface of the card. That has a texture to it, which of course plastic on the whole doesn't. It's, it's a, a very sheer um, uh, surface and it would need to be roughed up because I'm, the, the aim I'm going for is of the kind of building that's got some kind of plaster render on the outside, which is then painted. Uh, and just clear plastic or, or ordinary white plastic just has no t texture to it at all. But if I'm going for card, you then have the problem of light bleeding out through the card because at least with the plastic that acts as a quite good barrier. Um, so what I'm going to be doing uh, is to make use of the Woodland Scenic Light, light Block Kit, uh, which is a combination of a paint um, together with a, a kind of putty strip. Uh, and the putty strip is really used to seal joins where bits of card or bits... Uh, I mean, I think they really intend it for plastic card kits. Uh, I've done some tests on uh, paper or card and the paint goes on. Um, I'm not sure it really likes it. So when I've finished making the model, uh, I, will, I will probably do some strengthening on the back of plastic. Um, to give me a, a part of a barrier and then put the paint on the plastic uh, But that will be a much easier thing to do But it will give me the right texture for the front of the building Which is the thing I'm most concerned with and you'll see that as the build develops So the light block kick was one of the things I want to do because that means Internally, I don't need to build every floor and every corridor and separate uh, walls for rooms to divide off those windows that I don't wish light to come through I'm also going to be using uh, the light diffusing window film um, which uh, provides a, a translucent cover um, a bit like the Fava kit that I was mentioning in the last video so that light will come out but you can't actually see in uh, and I'll go into the detail of how I'll use that as I, as I come to make, make use of it. The core of it though is actually going to use the just plug system. So what I've bought so far is the basic lights and hub set. So that I get two lights with that. I've bought another two lights because I think the building will need at least four lights. The way in which it's going to be constructed, the lift lobby will be viewable through the big open window on the, the semicircular tower front. But that will be an entirely closed piece of work right at the front of the hotel. Uh, the two wings will need to be lit. Um, I'm thinking about getting lights for each of the, above each of the doors of the fire escape because they do some very small lights for the exteriors of building, which I may get. But that would need me extending the just plug system. Uh, this little lot was not cheap. Um, now some of it is core, so you won't need to keep rebuying it. Uh, it cost me about seventy-four pounds to get all of this stuff. And obviously there's, there's lots of use beyond the one hotel, which is why I've decided to go down this route. But we'll see as the thing develops uh, how well this, this works. Uh, you can buy individual pieces very cheaply, um, but to get the, the deal uh, together, I went to a firm in, in Portishead called Model Railways Direct. They were very keen on prices, actually very good prices for the Woodland Scenic and a very good range of the Woodland Scenic. And that was the thing. I could buy individual or two or three with Hattons or Rails or any of the other big ones, but not everything that I wanted. Uh, and, by, and there was no point buying one, a couple of bits from here and a couple of bits from there, because by the time you add up the postage, it becomes really rather uh, excessive. 
But all of this was paid with my money. I'm this none of <laughs> I only wish someone had given me all of this for nothing. Um, so that's it for for the for the model now. I'll start work on doing the model uh, and I'll video the parts because the next thing is to start working on cutting out I think the two front sections first and then building the center core that will have the revolving door and that will eventually take the the uh, semicircular uh, round tower at the front. In this section I'm going to show you how I go about making trees. Uh, this is all uh, learnt from YouTube videos. I'm using the GageMaster GM195 seafoam trees. I think there's other sources of seafoam which is cheaper. Uh, it, it's tightly packed in and what I'm going to do is just get out. Oh that's handy, that's a nice big sprig. That's, that's a very good sprig. Um, what you're really looking for uh, as you take these out is what you could make a decent tree with it and it, there will be all sorts of bits stuck in that are nothing to do with uh, with this but I think we can probably uh, make a couple of trees just out of that piece this I mean you would see if you were in double O gauge you've pretty much got the outline of a tree there uh, of itself uh, that would be a mighty tree or even on a even on a double O gauge um, layout so we'll take that part. I think this one will form quite a nice tree. Uh, so I'll just take the box out of the way. The next thing uh, is to trim up this to turn it into the trees that we want it to be. Um, so what we will do first of all is we'll take that off there. And um, all we're trying to do now is to start to make our tree by judiciously clipping out various pieces. You'll see if I bring this in, there are little seed pods or the rem remnants of what were seed pods, which you need to get in and take out because they will look really weird. So there's a bit of, if you're a good gardener, then this will be very easy for you. And it's really a case of starting to create uh, a tree from what you see here. Okay, well, I finished uh, pruning the 
pieces of sea foam to give me a, the rough shape, remembering this is the skeleton of the tree, not the final thing. What I'll be doing next, uh, which I picked up from uh, one video, you could use these just as they are, but the, as you'll see, they're quite light and depending on which tree you're going to be modeling. If you were doing a silver birch or something like that, I think if, that, if you're trying to be that accurate, I don't really go for specific um, types of tree. Um, is to spray paint them with an acrylic sp uh, spray. This is, as you'll see, is dark brown. Um, and then let that dry. Uh, and the next stage after that is to use, and I use a spray mount. Uh, other people use a, a, a dilute solution of PVA and just coat the tree in that. And then sprinkle on uh, the leaves, the whatever type of leaves you've bought. I've used Gage Master leaves. Uh, what you have in the packet here is that as you sprinkle on, of course, you sprinkle into a into a bowl or something, and you will inevitably have um, leftover leaves, and they've been uh, gathered up so that I can use them again. So what? And then once I've done that, I fix them with hairspray. Um, I have now um, learnt what strength of hairspray needs to be done to to make a good fix. Uh, so what I will do the next bit that you'll see is I will film myself doing all of those stages and then cut it into uh, a single section. And one thing that I would want to say before you see me actually doing everything is the protective equipment that I wear to make sure that um, I don't end up with the spray paint in my respiratory system. One thing I don't use is one of these masks. These things are fine for sanding uh, but they're of no use in protecting you or li very little use in protecting you against the fine particulates that you would have in any kind of spray paint. Uh, it's particularly acute with acrylics. I work in, in one of the rooms in our house. I don't have a spray booth uh, with an extractor system, although even if I had that, you still need facial protection. So I've invested, it cost me about 25 quid, in one of these things, which is a half face mask with proper filters that I can really secure the area around my mouth um, so that I don't uh, breathe in the particulates. I'm not sure you would necessarily need it. I do have a pair of goggles um, for th to stop things flying off and hitting me in the eyes, though that's less of a problem with painting. And I use these uh, gloves just to provide some protection to my hands. Um, so before you do any sp uh, spray painting, you need to have a well-ventilated room, preferably if you've got one, a spray booth. I don't have a spray booth. I don't do much spray painting. And as you'll see, my spray booth is merely a cardboard box to contain the, um, the spray of the paint. But I do always wear this face mask, even though it's acrylic. The particulates are so fine that they'll get into your lungs. And if they do that, they'll cause you serious problems. I can't stress too, uh, too strongly how important it is properly to protect yourselves if you're using any kind of spray paint inside.
Well, here you see the trees in their position. Um, if I zoom in a little bit, those are the two trees that I've just made. Uh, you saw me making. Uh, they filled a nice gap that was there. I thought it needed more trees. I ideally, I would quite like to put trees on the other side of the uh, churchyard, but that side is very open when this whole section lifts off uh, and there's really no protection there. So I'm um, I prefer to be able to protect just one side of the thing rather than having to protect both sides at the same time. Uh, that pretty much concludes uh, this month's episode. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. It'd be great to have you along. Uh, and give the video a thumbs up if you've liked it. That's all very helpful. And please, please do let me have your comments. I find all the comments that I get from people really very helpful indeed. Uh, so uh, with that, I'll uh, say goodbye and uh, look forward to speaking to you in about uh, a couple of weeks' time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.